Hi everybody, it's the uh, Placerville Mayor back again, trying to find some different ways this year to show you different angles, different aspects of Plasticville. Um, so today I'm going to be the big giant, uh, showing you, you know, my city. Uh, some of the recent stuff I've done this year has me real small and actually entering the city which was really a lot of fun. Uh, but now I'm just kind of this giant that takes care of all of these, these buildings. Uh, this is an uh, incomplete post office, an old post office. I don't know even how I came in possession of it. The complete one I have in my display right there, it's a post office. It's supposed to have two lights in the front and a flagpole. And this one's kind of shifting me. I just wanted to show you that, kind of, that the, the Plasticville buildings, well, they don't fall apart usually, but they snap together and they unsnap. And at the end of the season, you just kind of stick each one of them in its own little box that it came in. It's old, old box. These buildings are about 60 years old, all of them, most of them. Uh, and so, you know, I think that they are, there are a lot of them still around because a lot of people just, you know, take them apart, put them away, and use them once a year. Except for the lucky people that have displays that are up all year round, um, and then they don't have to bother with that. If these buildings were glued together, for example, you would need a big storage room to keep all these buildings during the off season. As it is, they all lie in boxes. I have a, a closet full of Plasticville most of the year, uh, except for usually I put, I've been putting it up a little earlier every year. Uh, usually it's up by Halloween, at least most of it, and then I keep adding to it. I add the snow by mid-November, certainly before Thanksgiving, and I usually take it down either the first of the year or sometime during the month of January. Keep thinking, oh, maybe I should leave it up a little bit longer, but uh, it takes up a big chunk of my living room and it's kind of nice to have the space. As much as I love Plasticville, I also love having a bigger living room, a little bit more space, a little cramped with, uh, with this big, was actually not that big. It's a ping pong table size because it, it is. It's a converted ping pong table. I wish I had more space and a, a bigger layout because um, I have plastic bill that doesn't fit onto my layout. And I have on shelves lying, I don't know if you can see it up there. There's some, there's some on the windowsill, there's some over there on the table, there's some over under the Christmas tree uh, with a little train around that. I can only fit, well, two trains and a trolley. Um, so I wish I had a more elaborate uh, layout, which I would if I had if I had more space. Um, and I just kind of I kind of fudge my way through it. I think a lot of train enthusiasts would be kind of uh, look down their nose at, at some of the things that I do. Um, I don't, for example, use wiring to light my buildings. I use puck lights. So I'm gonna be Jolly Green Giant and lift one of my buildings so that you can see the light and try not to tip anything over because it's like dominoes if you do. So lift that up so you can see the puck light under there. See how the building just kind of lifts and hopefully will stay together and hopefully won't get too much snow all over the carpet. Uh, so that's how I light my buildings. I don't do any wiring at all. Everything lights up by remote control, which is nice, it's easy. At the end of the season, I, just, I do use an awful lot of batteries. Each one of those takes three AAA batteries. And so far, they've been pretty good about lasting the whole season because I don't leave them lit all the time. If I did, I'd probably have to change them a couple times during the season. So put that back there. Try not to tip over. Um, you know what? I'm gonna take the tree. It's gonna be like once you, once something falls, it's like dominoes, and it's a little annoying. 
it takes a, a lot of patience. You're dealing with really tiny things that aren't nailed down. No, nothing is nailed down, absolutely nothing. Not even the track. Which means that I have more derailments than probably I should. Um, I try and inspect the track before I run the trains to make sure that uh, they don't, if the tracks come apart, there's a derailment. At the very least, the train will stop or it might even tip over. I get pretty close to the edge here since I don't have it nailed down. Um, it's, the rest of it would tip over onto the hardwood floors and that's not good for the train, so obviously. So things you don't notice in my videos, because again, this is a behind the scenes type of thing, is some of the noises, like the skaters make kind of a screeching noise or squeaking noise constantly. <clears throat> I don't know if you're picking that up or not. The trains tend to be pretty loud. I'm thinking next year of switching to uh, Lionel's new type of track called Fast Track. I think that's even louder, but I think there'd be fewer derailments if I did that. Uh, the train wouldn't, um, dog is cough, coughing. She has some kind of call, always. You heard that in one of my videos too. You're hearing it again. Um, so I have just three trains. I have here, one under the Christmas tree. It's kind of a new entry level train. I don't have real expensive trains. The, the, the best train I have is the post-war Lionel freight train in the middle. That used to belong to my brother, along with most of the Plasticville, uh, the original Plasticville, which explained once before that I had to replace because of a flood. And I replaced it all on eBay, getting back exactly what we had before. For example, this building is the police department. And you notice it's dark gray. I had the light gray variety up until this year. And when I saw in an old picture that we used to have the darker gray, I ordered the darker gray so that it would be more nostalgic. This is all about nostalgia for me. It's just this very nostalgic. It means Christmas. Christmas isn't the same without this, or without at least some train in some of these buildings. It's got, they gotta be around for it to really be an impactful Christmas. Um, so everything's lit up. I'm gonna run a few trains. Another thing you're gonna notice that you don't really notice too much in, in any, any of my videos is how loud they are. I think I was talking about that a little bit. Um, they do make a lot of noise, so I don't think I'll be able to talk over them. Hopefully, uh, there won't be any major derailments or accidents um, as we get this thing kicked up and we'll watch it go around a little bit and that'll be it. And that's a wrap for, for for now, anyway. Um, so let me go over here. I have all my transformers here. I have three transformers, a KW old uh, vintage one I run the old train with. I have a, one of those new little Lionel. Everybody, you know, everybody has a train that's one of those, these Lionel. I can lift it up. It looks like this. Uh, if you can see it very well um, for the Newer train. The newer train, I didn't tell you, is a Polar Express engine that pulls B and O passenger cars. Uh, I live in Baltimore now, and B and O stuff is it's hard to come by. There's a lot of demand for it. Everybody wants B and O in town. So I start out with the, the trolley. The trolley is from 1990, it says on it, uh, 1998. And it's kind of no frills trolley, doesn't ding or anything. It's pretty light, it never causes me any trouble, never derails, just kind of keeps going. Doesn't do very much, um, but it's, it's kind of cute. It says Merry Christmas on it. Uh, next I'm gonna run the BNO, and then I'll start up the, the old Lionel post-war and we'll see how things go.
Okay, right, so that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you, but I'm not really set up for it yet, is to show you the Noma talking station that is from the 1950s, are pretty common too. And I had that talking via a Bluetooth speaker with my cell phone. Um, I have the announcement playing over the speaker because the old mechanism doesn't work anymore. Uh, so we took the innards out of it and, and that's the way that it talks, but it's, you know, too. It's, it's very nostalgic. It sounds exactly the same way that it that it sounded um, when it was working in the '50s and when I was playing with it in the in the '60s. So that's it for for now. Behind the scenes here with uh, Plasticville, with uh, big giant Plasticville Mayor in this case. Um, hoping to do a couple more videos before the end of the season, and, and that'll be a wrap for the season until next year so thank you for for taking the time to watch i really appreciate it and do feel free to leave any comments that you have uh any questions that you have i'd be glad to answer them um and i hope to see you again soon thanks again for visiting bye bye